Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today's the day we're going to start on the actual uh, Jewel Spinner, Spinner Beetle Melty that I've been wanting to do uh, since I talked about it in the Bolt video. So, uh, in that video I showed you two different options for what I thought this Jewel Spinner might end up looking like and in reality I kind of wanted to like merge the two of those things together get some kind of like combination going and the more I thought about it the more I kind of uh, wanted to do something a little bit interesting shaped and I had this idea to do an octagonal multi brain and I just had to CAD that up and it ended up looking a little bit like this which I love to pieces uh, so that is what we're doing today. We're probably only going to do the chassis today because the actual Melty Brain code is quite complicated and it will probably be its whole own episode getting the thing to actually Melty properly. Uh, but for now we're going to work on a chassis and we might even be able to get everything set up so that it has all of the electronics that it needs to drive, just not all of the electronics it needs to Melty. Uh, so, first of all, we're going to need some chassis pieces, and because this thing is so massive, the whole thing is going to be made out of HDPE, so let's get some milling going. So, here we go. We've got the main ring, and we've also got the standoffs, which actually don't quite fit in here yet, because these are supposed to kind of slide into these spots. Uh, but I left these holes a little bit short so I could file them back so I've got an absolutely perfect fit on these. And then we have the weapon panels which currently don't have motor mounts cut into them. I left that blank in the CAD so that I could chop and change that as needed. Uh, yeah, which we'll probably get onto very soon here. So we should just test the... oh dear. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we have a bit of an issue with that. That is a lot of slop in that dovetail. Yeah, uh, yeah, give me half a second. Okay, Mark IIs. So, these ones are quite tight to the point where I'm actually probably going to need to file them out. I just, I got my toolpath just slightly wrong in the last one, and there we go. Now, these just lock in, but like I said, I'll file them out a little bit to get those going. But the next thing I want to do is I want to file these so that the uh, the uprights go in. We've got two different types of uprights. We have motor mount uprights that have more holes in them, and then we have regular uprights that just have the two mounty holes in them. Then obviously everything kind of sits up like this a little bit, and then we'll have bolts running top to bottom, that type of thing. All right, let's get some filing done. And done. Oh, that was a lot of work, but so worth it. I mean, I did, obviously uh, that it took a long time. So towards the end there, I did kind of only file them a little bit and then smack them in with a hammer. But that seemed to work okay. So, oh damn. <laughs> uh, we need the top ring. Please hold. And we're now mostly there. These are still quite a tight fit, so there is actually a bit of a gap still left. And I was almost to getting this together, very close to hitting it with a mallet and just making it go. And then I realized I probably should actually mount stuff to these face plates before I smack this all back down together, because uh, it's gonna be a little bit easier to drive some bolts in here uh, with those like that. So let's get some bolts in to get the motors on. Cool, so that is drive pod set up, and you may have noticed these are up on buff blocks that just hold them out a little bit, because otherwise the motor actually wouldn't fit uh, inside the rings that I have set up. So, we needed to do that, and these guys should now 
go slot in here. If I can get these back in. So that one was supposed to go up the other way. Uh, but I should go back in here with a little bit of force and more importantly have the wires facing the same direction because the next point is going to be to wire all this stuff up and that we're going to need to have everything sitting the same way for. So, boom. Look at that. There we go. All the wires going the same direction. So now we should put the lid on and then put the wheels on. Although these wheels also need tires. So, lid. Cool, so chassis is now rolling, which is good. And it's time to put in the electronics boxes, which I have right here. These are printed in a flexible PLA, which kind of blows my mind still. Uh, so these are gonna be good for a little bit of shock mounting for some of our electronics. Although where I've decided to mount up my accelerometer, probably not the best place because it needs to be at a pretty exact radius. So this type of thing, not the greatest. Uh, but we're gonna try and put these in anyway, because like I said, I'm not gonna get it melting right now, so this will do for the moment. Uh, but when we go to get it melting, we'll need something a little bit more rigid, or we'll just need to put a brace in the back here to make that all rigid up. Uh, so this one's the electronics one, which means it needs to go down this side where those wires are. This one is the battery one. Now the battery one has been designed so the battery sits as close to the inner radius as possible down in here. Uh, just because the more, it's the heaviest thing. So the closer I can get it to the internal radius, the less impact it has on the, uh, the inertia, which is good. So hopefully we should just be able to like wriggle this. Oh, it does go in, ha, huh, cool. Sweet, so that goes in like that. Now we can't fully bolt the thing together yet because these two bolt holes here those are partly what keeps this together, but they're also partly what keeps this on here. There's gonna be a metal plate that goes across there, which we'll probably just 3D print for the moment to get this going. Uh, but we need to have these ready to do that, but there is extra bolt holes on the outside that we can put bolts in. Okay, so that's the chassis together-ish uh, with the both of the electrical pods in and everything kind of wired up perfectly. So next it is time to start on the weapon mounting, which is gonna go on either side. And these, like I said, are still a little bit tight. You can actually just about get them on though. So that's good. Uh, we're going to get the motors in. So originally I wanted to use these motors, which are like a A2212, I believe. Um, however, I think these might be too heavy. This whole thing is starting to get a little bit weighty and it was always going to be a little bit weighty because it is quite a large robot. Uh, so I think what we're gonna end up doing is using these uh, 2305s that I have, which these are pretty cool. I think these will do the job. Uh, they're only gonna be spinning less than 100 grams of weapon on either side because I don't think I'm gonna have the weight for more than 100 grams of weapon on either side. So we're going with these, and this is actually why I left these without uh, mounting holes for a brushless motor, because like I said, I originally was choosing these, and if, they, if I'd cut these in, then there would be additional holes in this plate that I don't need, and that would actually probably weaken it. So the other thing too is we're gonna run these, so this motor is gonna sit up here, uh, and actually sit actually almost in that exact spot there. 
and then the weapon is going to sit kind of low to the ground on this side. Not quite an undercutter, but just low to the ground and probably the same thing on both sides. So I've printed up a little drill template. I'm going to drill some holes and then we're going to start on uh, doing this because we'll get a bunch of 3D prints as well. Cool, so that has worked out. I've only just managed to get the bolt holes into this thing. Uh, but while I was doing that, I kind of got carried away. So I actually have a little bit more set up than what I showed or what I am showing. Um, yeah, so we have enough stuff basically to do a full set of we weapon stack ups now. Uh, these guys are pretty much temporary at the moment because I've just got two of Annie's old bars in here. These will need to be cut down to 100 mil diameter and also uh, drop a lot of weight out of them because these are like 300 grams a piece right now and I definitely don't have that weight uh, in here. But what I thought would be cool is trying to go through and put this thing together for the first time with you guys on camera because I'm actually not 100% sure just how this goes together. There's a little bit of... Uh, yeah, order of operations that we need to work out to get this thing to go together. But first step is to get the motor on. So that should be relatively easy. Literally just gonna like hand screw this in place. There we go. So yeah, this is where the motor is gonna sit. It's gonna sit kind of uh, off the edge a little bit, which is a little bit nerve wracking for me. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and it's semi-exposed on the robot, but when it's in full melty mode, uh, you'll hit the weapon before you hit this little dude. So that should theoretically be okay. So with that done, this is actually gonna be upside down. So this is gonna be a top plate uh, up here. If I can just like, oh, these are just still a little bit tight, but they do go if you force them in place. Anyway, so that's gonna sit upside down like this, which means we actually need one of the ones that's gonna go the other way so we can do the rest of this weapon stack up. So, hit a bolt, and we're gonna throw that in there, and then we're gonna throw a washer on top of that, and then remembering to put the belt on first because putting the belt, not putting the belt on is always one of those things where you're like, ah, oh, damn. <laughs> Uh, actually, that's the wrong way around. We want to go that way around. This is why I need to uh, do this with you guys or wanted to do this with you guys so I can show off the order of operations stack up that's happening here. So then we should be able to kind of eat this up a lot, get this bolt a lot more through. And once it's through the other side, then we've got a little spacer that goes on here. And then, with all of that together and the bolt barely sticking out the top, just like that, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try and put the belt in and then get these two to lock together. So, belt in first, so that the bolts line up and match up, and then get the two so that when I tighten this down, the M8 bolt goes through the pair, just like that. Uh, now, obviously, this, it's a little tight actually, um, and we will need to put a nut on the back here so that this stuff all stays together. Uh, and obviously it needs to be squared up a little bit and it will square up when it gets attached to the robot, hopefully. Uh, and also obviously these weapons are way too big right now so I can't actually spin this up properly because that's just not gonna work. But if I tighten this down some, just by hand still though, hold everything kind of in place and just try and Tighten this down a little bit. I might need to change my motor pulley because it might be too tight because at the moment it is kind of pulling everything in, tucked in that way. So that is actually thinner than this at the outside edge, which is bad because we get a weapon hitting the pulley. 
once again though, this blade is too long, but still it shouldn't be that close. Anyway, let's see if I can kind of sort of jam this on here and see if I can get this to work in some semblance. And bam, check this beast out. <laughs> it's just, it's a little bit insane to be perfectly honest. Uh, so there's a lot that we need to do with this. Obviously this is just the first run of the chassis shape and design. Uh, there's still not many bolts holding all of the things together. The weapons are like 200 grams overweight each. Uh, maybe a little bit more than that actually because I just weighed this whole thing and it's sitting at 1.5 kilos. So it's uh, beetle weight for the UK size. Uh, but by the time I cut out all of uh, the weight in the weapons and stuff, I should have kind of 200, maybe 250 grams for batteries, electronics, extra screws and bolts, and the aluminium plates or whatever plates I decide that are gonna go over top here to stop the weapons from jumping out of these dovetail joints because those aren't in there yet. Uh, mostly because I do need to redo my belt system uh, down here. There's just not enough room for these weapons to spin, even when they can, even if they could spin because they were the right size. Uh, so yeah, I just need to redo all of that just to give a little bit more clearance uh, in underneath the weapons. But yeah, oh, I love this thing. This is, it's just, it's coming together so much better than I was expecting it to. So, oh, so good. Anyway, that's gonna be it for today. Uh, hopefully in the near future, we'll get this thing spinning and then we'll get it spinning under Melty, but that will all be in a future video. So if you wanna see that, uh, make sure you subscribe and click the bell to make sure you get notifications, all that kind of stuff. You know people know how to do that. People tell you all the time. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.